Okay, so for chapter 11, problem 4, this is a contingency table. This is just like number 3, but I wanted to do 4 instead. Um, what you need to do is they are looking to see if um, the two things are independent of each other. Okay, so you know, does one thing affect another? So in this case, we're looking at age of uh, males and um, how much they earn, or somehow how much life insurance they have. So the null hypothesis for all of these is always going to be that they are independent and then the alternative is that they are dependent of each other. Now to f calculate degrees of freedom, what we have to do is we have to take the number of columns and the number of rows, subtract one from each of them and multiply. So we have one, two, three, four, five columns. So that's five minus one. And we have one, two, three, four, four rows, four minus one, and we're multiplying them. And that's how you find the degrees of freedom for a contingency table the test of independence. And then again, it's just going to be the chi-square with the degrees of freedom below it. Now, how do we get the test statistic? <coughs> we have to use matrices. So we're going to go to, and we're still going to look to find the observed and the expected, but the expected is going to calculate itself. So we're going to go to second matrix, which is above the um, x to the negative 1 here. And I'm going to put in A, so I'm going to edit A. And now what I have to do is I have to put in how this is going to look. And we have 5, wrong one, 4 rows and 5 columns. So this is the number of rows, this is the number of columns, and then we just type in the information, so 45, and enter. As we hit enter, it'll go across. I missed one somewhere. Okay. So I have all of my information in matrix A. And then I'm going to do second quit. All right. So to do this, we're going to need the, well, those are observed values. We're going to need the expected values in uh, matrix B. And to calculate those, we would have to take the total from the row, the total from the column, multiply those, and then divide by the grand total of things, and do that for each cell. Well, the calculator is going to do all that for us. So we're going to go to Stat, Tests, and we're going to come down to Chi-Square Test. Not the goodness of fit test, but the Chi-Square Test, and everybody has this, the old calculators and the new calculators. So we go to Chi-Square Test, and the observed are in A, and the expected are going to go into B. Now, we didn't put anything in there, but it's going to go in there automatically. We hit Calculate, and it gives us our chi-square value, 157.55. It gives us our p-value. This is 1.65 times 10 to the negative 27th power. So we have to move this decimal point 27 places before we have a value. So the first four of them are all going to be zeros. And what does it mean? It means that's the chance of getting this test statistic 
if the null hypothesis was true. So sketch a graph, put whatever picture you'd like, and then we're going to compare it to alpha. Alpha is 5%. 5%. What are we going to do? Since alpha is greater than the p-value, we reject the null hypothesis, and there is sufficient evidence to conclude that they are dependent upon each other. Now, let's go back and look. One thing we have to check, notice there is now something in B. All right. What we have to make sure is that every value is bigger than 5. and we can see every value is bigger than 5. If they're not bigger than 5, then the test is not valid. So we are good to go. Every value was bigger than 5. So this is a valid um, chi-square test and all of our results are done. And notice it put all the information right into B for us, so we didn't have to do any of the work. That's it, and I will see you on Saturday.